Uh, so the recording has started and uh, we'll get into some of the chapters that we want to complete today. Um, let's pray and then we will start off. Uh, maybe Savita, can you lead us? We'll pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day and this time and this new life and this book, my Lord. I surrender for hands. And each every one, I surrender for hands to guide us, teach us, Holy Spirit, my God, give you constitution power, give you understanding power, Holy Spirit, my God. And I surrender for your hands, especially in our singing, my God. You speak us to through your names. So God bless us, give us knowledge. Thank you, Father. And uh, each every time, please guide us. Handle us in spirit, my God. And thank you for in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, thank you. Thank you, Savita. So we uh, have a few more chapters left here, which I think are more um, like the understanding about faith we've already received, but uh, how to apply faith and uh, some of the connected subjects are what we are looking at. So actually, it's not much. Uh, maybe, I mean, we'll see if possible by uh, may, maybe one more uh, class, hopefully, uh, and then we can actually complete unless uh, we have a lot of things to talk about and discuss about, right? So that's how it is. Um, we'll see. It depends on the questions that you people ask and, uh, you know, the way we are going to examine these subjects. So today we look at the joy, resilience, and the rest of faith. Uh, so a few more things for us to note. Like remember, we said that Abraham, in his journey, uh, he gave thanks to God. I think it's uh, Romans um, uh, four twenty, uh, giving thanks to God. He strength. He was strengthened in his faith. So. Uh, another aspect for us to note is that when we have faith in our journey, there will also be some sense of joy. Okay, so what is joy? Joy, uh, how do you define joy? Or how do you understand what is joy? I am sure you all know what joy is. You just have to communicate it to me. Happiness. Happiness. Um, uh, true. Uh, but then, you know, joy is also, a, it is, you can, with regard to faith, we can say that it is connected to expectation. Okay, it's connected to expectation. So, um, Joy is happiness, joy is gladness, joy is, uh, you know, a sense of uh, feeling light and hopeful. These are all words we can use to describe joy. But if you want to understand it, maybe an example might help. Um, uh, like, uh, you know, imagine a, a child, okay, and uh, the parent has told them that they'll buy them uh, chocolate or something like that. So when I come home, I'll give you, I will give you chocolate. OK, so then uh, let's say the parent comes home every day at four o'clock. So from three o'clock, you, you can see what joy means because the child is expecting and it's very happy and, uh, uh, you know, trusting that, OK, my parents said or my father or my mother said they will buy me chocolate. It's almost three o'clock. It's almost three thirty. You know, it's almost four o'clock. So when they come, I'm going to get my chocolate. So do you see that that sense of um, gladness? In the, uh, in the attitude of that child, that is joy, okay? So when we talk about faith, we said so much about waiting, trusting God, holding on, pressing in, fighting, you know, uh, spiritually uh, in our faith. But there is this other aspect of being joyful. Okay. Now, uh, joyful, is it something that uh, uh, we sense in our emotions or is it deeper than that the kind of joy we are speaking about is it just our emotions see even abraham uh, there are two things we have to understand okay when we talk about the human being uh, i've already said we are three-part being 
okay we have the body we have the soul and we have the spirit so uh, the soul will have a lot of emotions we feel happy we feel sad we feel angry all that is part of the soul but in the spirit in the spirit the spirit man there are senses also okay just like the soul has senses the spirit also has senses the spirit can feel the spirit can uh, we'll we'll talk about it later but there are abilities of the spirit uh, the way we we talk about um, you know in our supernatural hour we ask did you see anything what is that naturally we are not seeing anything right in our soul we may um, you know maybe it's a tough day for us and we are not feeling joyful but in the spirit feelings can be different perceptions can be different okay uh, what we sense can be very different so when we ask did you see anything it's generally got to do with the spirit man so the spirit man can see the spirit man can feel the spirit man can sense you got it so similarly when we say joy joy usually has to do with something that is deeper so in the spirit we can have a lot of joy whereas in our soul maybe we are feeling down we are feeling we are not feeling the happiness so to speak okay but joy is from within it's it's from the spirit part of us where even though the circumstances look very tough we know that ultimately god's uh, promise will come through so that is the meaning of joy joy is so much deeper so uh, some we can imagine you know when you look at people like um, uh, um okay a good example noah if you take up somebody like noah where uh, it was difficult for him to build the ark uh, it was tough for him to wait for the flood to actually happen but with the insight there is a strength that comes from joy where you're holding on and you're trusting that god will um, do the miracle you got it so joy is a very very important part of faith for many of us we think about faith as oh faith means it's a struggle abraham waited 25 years he must have been in pain he must have been in emotional pain okay and uh, he must have not really enjoyed his journey but that's not true just because we are waiting it doesn't mean that we are lacking joy or you know that we cannot rejoice even when we are waiting that rejoicing is from inside okay so we can have joy that's the real meaning of joy there are some passages here which we can uh, read they are very like you know important where uh, romans 15 13 okay i'll just uh, go through that and the next one somebody can read it so romans 15 13 it's it's a really encouraging scripture because it says now may the god of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the holy spirit so it uh, describes who god is so we say god is a god of love god is a god of peace jehovah Sh um, uh, shalom okay so we know the nature of god god is righteousness so you know jehovah sikkenu there are many names that describe god who he is we get an understanding when you read the name of god or the actions of god the nature of god becomes very clear to us what kind of a god is he we can understand here romans 15 13 is a beautiful scripture which says may the god of hope okay so that's amazing because god gives hope where there is no hope who can give hope only god can give hope and the scriptures tell us that the god we serve is a god of hope right so uh, there is nothing like a dead end situation for god even if it is a dead end situation he is able to change it because with god there are many possibilities he is the god of the 
impossible. So here is a name that we um, see about God. What is that? God of hope. Okay? God of hope. And uh, Paul writes, he writes, May the God of hope fill you with all joy. See, when there is hope, what is hope? We, we discussed earlier, what is hope? The simplest understanding of hope. What is hope? Just okay. hope is expectation. Yeah, hope is expectation. A constant thing. Correct. Hope is, um, we also said joyful expectation, right? This is like so many chapters behind. So should we just stop and ask you guys to go back, revise and come back? Or what shall we do? You remember, right? Did we talk about it or not? Not sure. Okay. All right. So hope is a joyful expectation. We expect from God. But what is the difference between hope and faith? Okay, very good. Yeah. So now faith is the substance of things. The, uh, you know, the things that we hope for, it says. So Faith is in the now, hope is in the future. Got it? Faith is in the now, hope is in the future. Hope is a joyful expectation. And uh, it is connected with faith, but faith and hope are different. Got it? Faith is just a joyful expectation. So, the scriptures tell us that Joy is also very much a part of the faith journey. We can all be so joyful. We can all be so happy. Uh, even though we are trusting God for, you know, some miracles or some breakthroughs in the future. So uh, it, it is really from within. It's really from within. So uh, someone can please read 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 7 through 9. That the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perish, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelations of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvations of your souls. Okay, so uh, this just reminds us that when we uh, have faith in God, the outcome is joyful. Okay, the ultimate result is joyful. So that is the reason we can still hold on in faith. Now, it may seem like um, holding on in faith is quite tough. You know, the best example for something like this is a mother who sort of carries her child in her womb for nine months. It's, it's like, it's faith, right? Like they're trusting God that everything will be well, the child will be well. Uh, but ultimately, what is the outcome? Outcome is very joyful because it, the child is there and, you know, the mother's finally happy. So that's how faith and joy look. When we are journeying, uh, it may seem somewhat hard, uh, but still in our spirit we can rejoice, but we must always keep our eyes on the results. Okay? So when we keep our eyes on the results, the journey or the race becomes um, easier, somewhat easier. So we read about Jesus. This is in the book of Hebrews. They have not uh, given the reference over here. Uh, I think Hebrews 12, where it says that Jesus endured the cross, okay, because of the joy set before him. 
So what is that? What is the um, uh, example of Jesus? Do you think it was a very happy experience for Jesus to go on the cross? No? But it says Jesus went to the cross because of the joy set before him. What kind of joy can be there to, you know, if you go on the cross? Think about it. What joy can you get out of it to go to the cross? See, the journey is hard. Jesus has to go to the cross. Okay. But he did it because of the joy set before him or he looked at the outcome later on. So that's why he did it. Okay. Tough journey, but eyes are fixed on the results. Got it. That's what we are saying right now. Even about uh, faith and joy, that's what we are saying. We are saying the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. That simply means the faith that we have now, there is a good outcome or a good result that faith is going to see. Okay? Uh, and it is going to give God the glory. So the results are good. The journey is hard. Okay? Now my question to you is, Jesus lived like that. It was a hard journey, but there was joy set before him. So what is it that made him happy when he looked at the future? Joy of overcoming, okay, good. What else do you think made him happy? Uh, joy of salvation of many people. Yes. So the joy of um, saving the whole world. Imagine what a wonderful result, right? So he was happy about that. He was so happy about that. Then uh, anything else that made him so happy? You can imagine he has to go on the cross full of pain. People are saying evil things. Uh, it's very hard. But something else was giving him the joy. And that is, in his mind, he's thinking, what is going to be the result of all this pain which I'm enduring? So, salvation, overcoming, what else? Finish? Yeah. So complete, complete the, the father's assignment, right? It makes us happy. Okay, God gave me this one lifetime. I did what the father asked me to do. So I'm happy. So Jesus was happy about that. Anything else? Okay, could we say that uh, uh, he was also happy that he was going to be with the father? Finally, everything is over. He was separated from the father, right? But he's going back to be with the father. So that also made him very joyful. So the point is, you see, the journey can be very hard. But what is in our minds about the outcome that really, really matters? Because we can be joyful, uh, in faith, knowing that this hard journey is worth it. Okay, it's worth the trouble. It's worth the difficulties. It's worth the um, pain that we are going through. Because inside, in our spirit, there is joy. Something good is going to come out of this faith journey. So that's how, you know, faith and joy look. But for that, we need to have the right perspective. When we are thinking correct, then everything makes sense. But when we are not thinking correct, when we say that, uh, oh, God is not answering me, how much longer? You know, we ask questions like that. But we are, we are not keeping our attention on the results that God is showing us. Okay? So uh, then what happens when we start asking all these the wrong questions? 
our faith will weaken. Okay, our faith will begin to weaken. So uh, I'm not saying that you know, as human beings, we don't have our weaknesses. Of course, we do sometimes. But the even if we go into that mode quickly, you got to come back and say, okay, God, you know, I'm sorry. I know why uh, you have asked me to do this. There is a good result. There is a good outcome. So being joyful in our uh, journey of faith is possible. Got it? Just because we are um, waiting or just because we are trusting God for a breakthrough, which is coming later. Imagine all believers, right? All are in faith. All are waiting for some or the other promises of God. Okay? Which maybe for many years they are waiting. So if everyone is waiting, if and all of them are, uh, you know, sad because, oh, still God has not done... It will be such a sad crowd, isn't it? Every believer is uh, sad or depressed because God is not doing today. He's only going to do tomorrow. But that's not how it is supposed to be. All of us can be very joyful even when we are waiting for God's uh, promises to be fulfilled tomorrow. Where does that come from? Where does that joy come from? Where does the joy come from? From within. Okay. From within. It comes from God. It comes from spending time with God. It comes from spending time in the word. But it comes from within. Okay. We can be so joyful. Um, okay. Let's move on. Anything else about joy that uh, you want to ask or discuss? We can talk about it. Do you think it's practical? It's possible to be joyful. Okay, fine. So hopefully we'll all be joyful, right? Okay, good. Now let's move on. The next uh, section here says resilience of faith. So resilience simply means the ability to um, like uh, come back. Okay. Uh, so if you if you know like rubber bands, we use our rub uh, we use rubber bands. You stretch it, uh, and then it still kind of comes back. And it has good capacity. It can be stretched for really long, but still it won't break. It'll it'll be fine. So it depends on the resilience of the substance that we are using. Maybe there is some material which you can stretch a lot and it won't break. It won't tear. But maybe there are some materials that you just stretch a little bit and they break. So if it breaks, we say it has no resilience. But if it can be stretched and it will not lose its integrity, we say this material has resilience. Okay, so in the same way, in our journey with the Lord, uh, resilience simply means that, uh, you know, sometimes when we come under pressure or stress, uh, are we still in that place of faith before God is the question. Or let's say if somebody is weak in their faith, the first thing that goes wrong, they'll say, oh, forget it. Uh, God, God is not faithful to me, you know, God doesn't care about me, this and that. Because they're weak, their faith is so weak. Something happened, the, you know, the rubber band just snapped. It's not that good material. But if our faith is resilient, it means when we are going through our journey, there are a lot of stresses. Stress means pressure. Okay, all kinds of pressure. Uh, maybe we, we are going through persecution for believing in Christ. Okay, family is persecuting, uh, workplace, people are saying all kinds of things, or, uh, you know, uh, our friends are commenting about us and saying, oh, what is this? You became a holy person. They may say all kinds of things. So what does this do to us? It adds to our stress, right? It adds to the pressure. Or maybe for the sake of righteousness, we have to make some decisions. Okay, some wrong things are going on in our friend circle. And we say, uh, okay, fine, I have to make a choice. Uh, I'm going to, uh, 
leave these friends uh, and i'm just going to protect my mind okay right company good company it's it's very tough because you are letting go of what you are used to you got it but these things are adding pressure to uh, your your kind of your daily living your uh, your uh, lifestyle okay or um, disciplines in in the um, word of god things like okay i have to spend time in the word i have to spend time in prayer or fasting so tough right sometimes and uh, we feel like how can i do this it's too much i'm feeling stretched you know more and more pressure uh, but the thing is if our faith is strong we can we can be resilient meaning we can remain our faith can remain strong in the midst of all these circumstances right uh, but if our faith is weak the first thing that happens we break the faith will just break you got it but resilience is very important for faith because you know it's a reality that we will go through a lot of challenges you know people may even question us they may say oh you're saying god 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 will answer god will heal why this person didn't get any answer why that person didn't get any, uh, didn't get healed uh, so uh, does that mean that god is not working so maybe there are questions that people may ask or we ourselves are asking questions or challenging times uh, we are trusting god we are doing things um, you know in the right way uh, and because of that we may be going through a financial crisis you got it then in those times it's so tough where um, really it's like how we read in first peter chapter 1 he says the genuineness of your faith meaning faith is being tested okay i don't know if i told if told us this earlier but uh, when gold is purified okay did i mention it yeah i think so i mentioned it so the the way metals or gold is purified is they'll they'll raise it to a high temperature okay very high temperature when the metal actually melts okay so the faith when when peter says your faith is tested that's what he means he's saying all the pressures all the difficulties challenges unanswered questions you know delays disappointments everything put together it's almost like the temperature is rising but what happens to the gold or uh, if you consider your faith what happens to your faith we are told that you know the faith only become depending on what kind of faith we are carrying if it is genuine or if it is real faith which we are carrying uh, no amount of pressure stress can break it okay or destroy it it only becomes purer so when gold is raised to very high temperature uh, it it you can purify it it becomes clean okay and you know how they test it anyone have you heard about that how uh, at what point do you kind of uh, understand that uh, the gold is pure now so they say that it becomes so uh, clean without any impurities that when you look at it there is a reflection it's almost like a mirror it becomes like a mirror where you can see a reflection so i mean it is said that uh, when our faith is tested right uh, and it is pure it's almost like when god looks at our faith uh, god's reflection will be there in that faith you can you can see you know god's um character his power his strength in us and in our faith so to that extent actually all these difficulties will only make our faith strong got it so that is the meaning of resilience you know how tough is our faith how tough is it is it tough enough or not you know and we must have very strong faith resilient nothing should be able to break it nothing should be able to shake it got it so that's the way one must build their faith so how to build this kind of faith so strong yeah exercising our faith so two things we can remember okay feed it it will become strong when you feed it so if we take two plants just take two plants water one plant don't water the other plant okay do this for 4 months 
What is the result? Put it in a pot. OK, so not much nutrients and all. Uh, so then what, what might happen? Yeah, so whatever you feed will thrive. What you don't feed will die. Got it? It's as simple as that. And we can use this principle for our benefit. Feed the faith and starve the unbelief. So the more we feed the faith with the word of God, with the truth of God, what happens? We are talking about resilience, right? Strength of our faith. It becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. Okay? What happens to unbelief? It dies because you're not feeding it. Every wrong thought that comes to our mind, what does, you know, Paul says, tearing down every thought. Why? Even one wrong thought, if it comes, it's not in the word of God. You say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I don't agree with this thought. This is not what God says about me. This is not what God says about my situation. So what are you doing? You're starving the wrong thought and you're feeding faith. Then faith will become strong. So two things I said. One is feed your faith. Second is, as uh, Komal said, exercise your faith. So the more we exercise our faith, the stronger it becomes. So these two things, as we do, keep doing it all the time. Exercise your faith, feed your faith every day. Make sure, feed your faith, exercise your faith. Right? Uh, we can stretch, and uh, how to how to um, you know stretch our faith by exercising it? Any any thoughts? Any examples? Feed the faith. We understand. Exercise the faith. How do you uh, keep exercising your faith more and more? Huh? In daily life, correct. Okay. So in daily life, take it as a challenge. Every day, take things as a challenge. Maybe there is, uh, you know, an assignment that we are feeling it's too tough for me. Take it as a challenge. You say, okay, no, but I will believe God. I will trust God. Okay, let me pray. God, please help me. Give me the wisdom. I'm going to try. Try. What did you just do? You exercised your faith once, right? The next time something like that happens, exercise your faith again. So then what is happening? It's as we said, right? It's like a muscle. The more you exercise, it just becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. And you'll be amazed. You know, God will keep sending tougher and tougher assignments your way because he knows that you will exercise your faith. Got it? So just take up challenges, new challenges, even when it comes to, um, you know, ministry. Uh, and I've said this earlier, moving in the gifts. You know, when we say, okay, what are you seeing? It's come, share, speak it out. What is that? It's going to take faith to do it. So maybe first time we are feeling so scared, but come do it, right? Next time it's a little easier because that muscle is already now a little bit stretched. It's already flexible. Now the second time it's easier. So when it comes to the gifts of the spirit also, this is how our faith moving in the gifts becomes stronger because you're using it and using it and using it and using it again and again and again. If you don't use it, forget about growing it. It won't grow. Many things in ministry are like that. If we don't do it, if we stop praying for people, if we stop, you know, learning the word and preaching the word, it'll be a little more, it'll be a little tougher to do it the next time. Because uh, we have, you know, it, it's just like that muscle concept. If you don't use your muscles for a long time, it'll be weak. But when you exercise it, it becomes stronger. So two things which we have to do to keep our faith stronger. What is the first one? Feed. Okay, feed the faith. What is the second one? Exercise. Exercise the faith. Okay. Just practice these things on a daily basis. And we'll find that our um, faith is very strong, very resilient and filled with joy. Okay, fine. So uh, I think we'll just go ahead and uh, 
take a small break. We'll come back at uh, 10 o'clock and we'll, we'll continue the rest of the content. Thank you.